hi guys welcome back to my channel today's video is going to be my review recap of if loving you is wrong season 4 episode 12 the papers now the episode opened with kelly sitting down in the interrogation room where they left off last episode then we have lucian standing up there and the detective man coming there and um kelly asked for her lawyer or whatever and he was like um well we heard your lawyer is no longer your lawyer and then kelly was like what are you talking about and then um he was like you're being arrested for the murder of Travis. And she was like, what? He's dead? And then, like, the detective man kept trying to get her to talk and all that stuff. And Lucian was like, she's going to wait on her lawyer. He was like, well, who are you? He was like, I'm just a friend. And then, um, and then Lucian got ready to leave the room. He was like, okay, so you get ready. You can just leave. And, um, Kelly was like, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. I want him in here. And he was, she, he was like, he can't be in here if he's not your lawyer or whatever. So Lucian goes out in the hallway and he keep asking Kelly stuff. And I'm like, Lucian already told you to be quiet. And she was like, talking about, he was at my window. And I'm like, girl, just shut up. Like, just shut up. You're going to get yourself locked up. Like, you see, you're not this naive to think that the police is going to be on your side. You already know everybody in, in town is on Travis's side. Everybody's connected to their family some kind of way. So whatever you say is going to be twisted and screwed. And you still sit up there trying to talk. And then she finally realized that she needed to shut up and kept on saying, okay, I'll wait for my lawyer. I can wait for my... She just was really, really getting on my nerves. It was really upsetting me. So the detective man finally like stopped trying to get her to talk. Um, after she asked for her lawyer, I'm like, you should have did that the first time because everything she says after she asked for her lawyer, you can't use it at trial. So I don't get like what he was doing. He was trying to get her to waive her rights. But once you ask for that lawyer, it's really a muddy situation. So he goes outside of the room. No, he he like arrested her. I was like, okay, so since you don't want to talk, you're going to go to the jail cell. But they didn't actually show him actually physically taking her to the cell. He walked outside and Lucian is standing up there. And Lucian was like, um, she's going to wait on her lawyer. He was like, well, her lawyer um is no longer her lawyer and Lucian was like well how you know because you're known to lie and he stand up to talk about i'm not lying I'm, I'm i'm known to interrogate i'm not known to lie so Lucian asked him what church, church should you go to he was like i don't go to any church he was like well, what church does your wife go to and then he was like oh you did some research research on me huh she goes to calvary so his wife goes to the detective man's um his wife goes to travis's family church so Lucian probably, Lucian's already told him, saying, okay, so I can't trust you. Kelly can't trust you. So basically what Lucian was getting at, that everybody in this town cannot be trusted. And since he's connected to the church or his wife is connected to the church, he can like try to plant anything on Kelly and try to misconstrue her words, try to have her like be guilty or whatever. So that was basically what Lucian was getting at. And the detective man, I don't know, maybe he probably realized it while he was talking to Lucian. But he didn't really state it or whatever. So him and Lucian, Lucian just ended up just walking off from him. And then we get Brad. As we left off last episode, he went outside to sit on the porch to wait for Marcy. And then, I don't know, some random way he went and stood on, he stood on like the property line. I don't know why, because Randall wasn't doing anything. And um, he went on the property line and he looked up at Randall. And Randall was like, what are you doing? Get off my property. So he looked down and he stepped back like one step. And he was like, okay, so I'm not on your property. And I'm like, Brad, what, what is this for? Like, because you and him, like, Randall wasn't even went messing with you. He was just minding his business in his own house, and you just randomly just stepped over there. So Brad went back and sit, sat back on the porch to wait for um, Marcy. And then he went into the house, and he started talking to Alex and asking Alex if she really went over there. Because the night before, Randall asking him, well, told him that Alex came over there and told him. And Alex is, be like, practically begging and pleading saying that she didn't go over there and Brad was like well how can I believe you and he Brad was like well how did he know I left and she was like I don't know he got the camera no Brad y'all took the camera so she can't say he got the camera or whatever and she was like um well I don't know I didn't go over there and I'm like Brad are you really letting Randall get to you like you really sit up here and believe in Randall knowing all the lies and all the crazy stuff that he actually goes through and puts everybody through and you actually even though I don't even like Alex but you could at least give her the benefit of the doubt because you know how Randall is. Randall is always lying. And then the baby started crying. She was like, oh, you're upsetting the baby. And he was like, his baby. And then she was like, oh, cool. so you're going to go through this all the time? You're going to go through this all the time? And I'm like, Brad, the test came back. That wasn't his baby either. So we don't know who baby this is unless it was like a mix-up mix, a mix -up down at the DNA office, which is probably unlikely. But well, we don't know this is Tyler Perryland, so he may write that in there. But that baby was so cute. Such a little cute little brown baby. 
He looked so cute. But after Brad got done arguing with Alex, he was like, he can't do this anymore. And she was like, oh, so you want to leave again? And you're going to um, confuse the kids and all this stuff. And I'm like, girl, you got some nerve. You come home with a black baby and saying that your husband is going to confuse the kids because he can't believe you. Like, of course he's not going to believe you. And he was like, he thought it, it wasn't going to be this hard. He thought it would be easier. So I'm like, no. Once you lose trust in any relationship, it's very hard to get it back. It always will be in the back of your mind. What is this person doing? Who is this person with? Like, you can never go back to the trust mode that you once had before it was broken. No matter, like, what you do, what you say, is always going to be something lingering in the back of your mind. So basically he go outside and sit on the porch to wait for Marcy because he couldn't stand to be around Alex anymore. So he went outside and sat back outside. And then we get Lucian down at the police station. Now Steven walks in and then like a little bit after that Esperanza walks in and, and Lucian picked up on the chemistry. And then Esperanza like walked out or whatever and he was like oh so what's going on? And then Lucian was like, what's going on with y'all two? And Steven play, playing like coy and like, ain't nothing going on. He was like, okay, so every, one day all y'all, y'all always talking and the next day y'all not speaking to each other. I said, that's the same exact thing I said last week when they claimed that they weren't going to speak to each other. I'm like, just act normal. Act in the same routine that you always been doing. Like if you start talking to somebody all, you be talking to somebody all day and then you just stop. People are going to pick up on that. But, and Lucian, he ain't even fighting for it. He was like, okay, well, whenever you're ready to tell me, then you'll just tell me. And then Steven asks about Kelly and stuff, and he tells him how Kelly's lawyer is not going to be the lawyer anymore, but they haven't told Kelly yet. I don't know why they won't just tell the girl, because she already acting all crazy. And then um, he asked Steven if he know anybody, and Steven was like, he can make a few phone calls or whatever to see, like, what's going on. And then Steven go off somewhere, and Esperanza come back in asking about Kelly and all that stuff. And then um, Lucian was like, he's trying to handle it. He's trying to get her a lawyer or whatever. But then, yeah, so Lucian ended up leaving. He left both of them standing in there. And while they standing in there, like, talking, whatever, Eddie walks in. And when Eddie walks in, Esperanza does what she does with him and storms out or whatever. And then he up there threatening Steven, talking about don't be at the house with his daughters there and all this other kind of crap. And just going back and forth with Steven. And Steven not even scared. Steven was like, I'm not scared of you. And Steven wasn't even punked or anything. He was like, yeah, 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 you're a cop. And he was like, I'm a cop too. This is just a bash to do whatever. And then he was like, um, he told Eddie about his cocaine binges and all this other kind of crap. And Eddie still was up there trying to threaten Steven. Steven, he didn't even flinch. I don't know. Steven is like really, really calm under pressure. But Eddie always think he could come in and just threaten anybody and get his way. And that's just how it's going to be. But Steven wasn't with the okie doke. Then it's back over to Brad's house. Marcy pulled up in his truck or whatever. And before she gets out the car, she calls Ian and tells him that um, the paperwork has been finalized and all that stuff. And he asks um, if she could bring him by the office at noon. And she was asking, was Larry going to be there because she don't want to see him? And he was like, no, he's over in court. So she was like, okay, she's going to be over there. And while she was over there, um, she walked up to the porch and her and Brad was talking. She was talking about how the car is total and her insurance and going to go up and how Randall's insurance is going to go up because he's on the insurance as well. Because, you know, like he put sugar in her tank. So I guess that like really, really ruined the car. And she apologized about being late and all that stuff. And he like he didn't really care whatever. He just was sitting outside like normally. And then he was telling her how Randall told him that Alex told him <laughs> that marcy was pregnant and marcy looked like she marcy kept trying to like interrupt to try to tell him that she think larry did it but when she realized that brad wanted to leave and come back to her she just kept it to herself and um because brad ended up telling her that he wants to leave and come back to the apartment and she was like you can come back and she, she had said something about him leaving he was like no you put me out I can't remember how did he leave. Did she really put him out? I know she kept trying to push him back to go back with Alex. But I can't remember if she actually told him just like leave or whatever. But um, but yeah, so he ended up just um, making up with her and telling her how he wants to leave Alex and how he can't trust her. And, um, and then she was like, and Brad was like, okay, so he doesn't even know that it's your baby. So that, that is his baby. So hopefully you get a divorce finalized before that happens. And um, Marcy was like, well, I filed my divorce lawyer, so I don't know how that's going to happen. 
But um, and I'm like, I hope Brandon was not eavesdropping around the corner. Because you know how crazy he is. He could be eavesdropping around the corner and seeing and realizing that it is his baby. But Tyler Perry didn't cut to that. Like, after they got done talking or whatever, they just got in the car. Like, it didn't show, like, anybody was listening or eavesdropping or anything. Not even Alex. Alex was in the house tending to the baby or whatever. So, that was the end of that. Then we get Lou and Ian. Lou finally calls Ian like, man, what's up, man? What's going on? And then the man, and Ian was like, he can't represent him because of the, because of Larry and all that crap. And then Lucian was like, really? Really? He was like, I'll text her <laughs> a number to another lawyer. Lou was like, she locked up? She ain't got her phone? He was like, okay, well, I'll text this to her. I'll text it to you. He was like, we just need another lawyer. He was like, I'll send over a really good lawyer or whatever. So Lucia was asking him, like, how much he owes him and all this. And he was like, no, I'll just do a pro bono. I'm so mad at Ian. Like, Ian, stand up to Larry. You got this evidence. Y'all can't railroad this black woman, even though I can't stand Kelly. Y'all can't railroad people in the system when you got evidence of them being innocent. Like, can you just imagine how many innocent people are really sitting in jail, even though everybody says they're innocent in jail but can you imagine how many really are of them are really in there for and they're innocent like it's really really annoying ian starts to get on my nerves and he was like he was going to tell kelly in person when he goes down to the courthouse today or whatever because he got to see another client but ian needs to like put on his big boy shoes and stand up to larry you can start your own firm you you got all the connections and all that stuff too so you can start your own firm i don't get him then we get Esperanza going down to the prison, the jail cell. Like, how does she get in there? She's a 911 operator. They don't have access to just go down to the jail just to see their friends. Like, it might be connected to the same place, but still. She's not a police officer to just go in there. And when she goes over there seeing Kelly, Kelly keeps asking about her lawyer, but she won't tell her either. She's just saying, oh, Lucian's working on it. She won't say that, um that Kelly actually doesn't have a lawyer because she's probably going to panic. Maybe that's probably why they're not telling her that. And then, um, she kept on saying, Esperanza, um, I didn't mean to do this. I didn't mean to do this. Esperanza keep telling her to just be quiet. Just be quiet. And she just kept like, and I'm like, um, and she was like, you know, I didn't mean to do it. Esperanza didn't answer. She didn't, she didn't react to anything. Esperanza, the type of friend, like, even if she, she probably think Kelly is wrong, but she won't tell Kelly that she's wrong. Cause when she said that, she didn't say anything. All her other friends, like Natalie and all them, they comforted her. Not Marcy, because Marcy wasn't there. I don't even think Marcy knows what's going on with Kelly. But, um, yeah, she begs her not to tell her son, like, what's going on. And, and my friends keep trying to tell her to be quiet. And she's talking about, I did this. I didn't, I didn't mean to do it. You know, he, I'm like, Kelly, just shut up. Everybody keep telling you to shut up in jail. They have cameras and, and everything around. And people, prisoners, inmates, all those people, they lie. Like, they're going to overhear you say certain stuff. And they're going to get on the stand and twist it around. Just shut up. Like, what last episode you acting all zoned out and stuff. Now you realize, you claim you realizing that what you did um, was wrong or whatever. Like, you can't have it both ways. You can't be all dazed and crazy and then the next day you realize what you did wrong and, and trying to think that, oh, I, can, I, I, I didn't mean to do it and all this crap. Just shut up. Like, she's going to be her own worst enemy. If she keep talking while she's in jail and everybody keep telling her to just be quiet. She's going to have her own self locked up for life. And we can't blame anybody for for that but her. Like, it's really, really annoying. Like, Kelly is really getting on my nerves. If they keep her in jail this whole season, just don't show her. Because I don't want to see her anymore. I do not want to see her anymore. Her and this fake crying with no tears. It's just really, really annoying me. Esperanza, too. Like, she's really annoying, too. Next, we get Marcy and Ian. Now, Marcy goes over to the office to drop off the papers to Ian. And uh, he was like, oh, I already, I already signed him. She was like, okay, so we can send him over to the lawyer. He was like, well, I'm, I'm the lawyer. I signed and notarized it already. She was like, okay, so we can send it over to the other lawyer. I guess the other side or whatever. He was like, oh, he already signed it. So Marcy was like, you didn't even really need me. <laughs> and he was like, actually, I didn't. And she was like, well, you could have saved on the commission and everything. He somehow something he used it as an investment. And she's like, investment? You consider me an investment? He was like, yeah. And she was like, okay, so what was the rush on the house? He was like, oh, I wanted to have the house and everything closed before my kids come for the summer. And she was like, oh, so you were like a good dad. He was like, yeah, something like that. She was like, you really are if you actually care about your kids. And then he ran there asking her out. And she was like, Ian. And then he was, he like played coy or whatever. She didn't even fight him. She just said, okay, I'll come. He asked her out for dinner and drinks. I'm like, Marcy can't drink, Marcy's pregnant. And while she's sitting right there, Larry walks in. She was like, oh my gosh. Because you know Larry supposed to be in that court. 
And then she was like, um, you all talking about me? And she was like, no. And then, um, he said something about the divorce. And she was like, you were supposed to get him to sign the papers, not like tell my business or whatever. And she was like, he was like, just don't fire me yet. What if I can get him to sign the divorce papers today? And she was like, what? He was like, yeah, what if I can get him to sign the divorce papers today? She was like, okay, whatever. She didn't really like fight him or whatever. Cause you know, Marcy really, really wants to get this divorce over and done with. So back down at the police station, Lucian is in his little like office or whatever. And Eddie comes in, thanking him for saving him and all this crap. And I'm like, Eddie, what are you up to? Because I was shocked Eddie came in there. And Lucian was like, okay. And <laughs> like, Lucian really don't care. He don't care anything for Eddie because, you know, Eddie is full of it. So um, Eddie was like, yeah, you know how many people I called and you the only one that answered? And Eddie, and Lucian was like, that could tell you, that could tell you something. He was like, I know I made these many enemies in this town and all that stuff. He was like, but you came through for me, Lou. Lou, you a good dude. And Lucian sent up there like, okay, like, I don't like you. So, like, I'm just being a police officer. That's that's what I'm supposed to do. Even though if I don't like you, I still can't let you go down like that. And, like, he basically told him to his face like that. And and then Eddie's, like, laying it on thick how Lucian is good dude. And, all. and Lucian was like, okay, so where's Andrew? <laughs> And I'm like, about time y'all brought Andrew back up because we've been looking for Andrew for, two, what, two seasons now? And like, what's the storyline with Pete? Like, what's going on with Pete? Like, they just completely put that to the side too. But he was like, I told you my uncle Rusty and all them got, got him. He's like, okay. Okay. And so he's up there talking about, so what you going to put in the report? So Lisa's like, oh, that's what this is about. The report. I knew it was something. He was like, I'm just going to put what's happened. And then um, Eddie was like, okay, so what you going to put about the gun and all that stuff? And Lucian was like, yeah, I'm going to put what happened. And he's like, I don't know if I'm going to write about your sex capades, your sex capades with um, Randall and all them. I'm like, <laughs> Lucian, you really going to put this in there like that? And, and Eddie, he didn't even flinch or whatever. He was, he just basically trying to figure out what he's going to put in the report. So uh, he held his hand out to shake Lucian's hand. So let, Lucian shook his hand. And then he came forward and he was like, okay. He whispered in his ear. So where's Andrew? And Eddie still didn't answer. He he really didn't answer. So Lucian was like, okay. And Lucian ended up just walking out of the room, leaving Eddie standing there looking stupid. So this is the last scene of the night, Randall. So Larry comes over. He tells him he has the lawsuit papers and he need him to sign. And then he was like, okay. And he was like, I also had a divorce papers I need you to sign. And Randall was like, I'm not doing that. And Larry was like, okay, so if you don't sign the divorce paper, I'm not going to represent you. And he was like, okay, I'll find another lawyer. And he was like, I'll, I really, really need you to sign these papers. And he, he was like, why do you need me to sign it so bad? He was like, because I really need you to sign these papers. And then he was like, no, I'm not signing. He was like, okay, so this is your last final thing of control that you're trying to have over Marcy. And he was like, yeah, I, she's pregnant and I want to stress her out because she's pregnant. I said, oh, so you're trying to make this girl lose this baby? It's not her fault that Alice's baby is not yours. Like, it wasn't, it's not Marcy's fault. You can't make Marcy suffer for some junk that you did. Like, in Randall's sick mind, she's pregnant from Brad. And it hurting him is like she did it out of spite to hurt him. But he did it first. But he doesn't see his wrongs. So, um, Larry's like, okay, whatever. And Larry was like, um, I'll do the work pro bono if, if you sign a divorce paper. He was like, no, I'm not signing them. He was like, okay, so whatever, just sign, go ahead and sign the lawsuit papers. And he was like, just sign here and here. And he ran and was like, okay, I'm going to read it first because I don't trust you. You slick. He was like, okay, you can read it. So Randall went through and read it. And he like signed and initial and all that stuff. And Larry was like, okay, thank you. And as Larry walking out the door, he's talking about, oh, I love you. And Randall started laughing. I say, being a slick shyster that Larry is. Randall done signed them down divorce papers. He probably finna Photoshop and cut and paste and all this to have them divorce papers final. I finalized. I'm like, Randall just fell for the okie dokie. He probably don't even know it. I know it's some kind of scheme that Larry's cooking up. So he get in the car and he calls Ian and tell Ian that he bought the facts over the divorce papers that Randall signs. And after he hung up the phone, Eddie gets up from the back seat and put a gun to his head. He was like, oh, okay, so what you gonna do now? What you gonna do to me now? And uh, it was like, shut up and just drive. And then it went off. And I'm like, Tyler Perry, boy, you play too much. But Larry got some kind of scheme going on. I hope he really does have Randall sign the divorce papers. Because I really do hate how 
Randall's treating Marcy. All her friends treat her bad too. Like none of them had even checked up on her. Even though some of them got a bunch of other stuff going on. Even though they could text her and see how she's doing. Do they? I don't even think they even know she's pregnant. Because I don't even think she told any of them. But yeah, they don't even text her and see how she's doing. Even though they still been baby babying Alex and trying to be her friend and stuff. When Marcy's the one who went through all of the stuff. Like it's really bizarre to me. Not even the black ones. They're not even checking up on Marcy. But they're going and kissing, kissing Alex's ass. Isn't that weird? But that's my review and recap on If Loving You Is Wrong. Season 4, Episode 12. The Papers. I'll be back next week. Thanks for tuning into my video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. All my social media links are down below. Buy my ebook football wags off of Amazon Kindle for 99 cents. Kindle Unlimited, you get to read both parts for free. I'm working on uploading it to Google Play right now. So if you have Google Play and any gift cards or anything, you'll be able to purchase it through there. I just have to figure out how I'm supposed to do it. Um, leave it a comment down below. If you think I missed anything or any important facts in the show, go ahead and leave it down below. If you watch the show, go ahead and give me your opinion on everything as well. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, guys. Bye.